Hi, this is Alpheus, and I have a 1996 Merc Cruiser 3.0 LX engine here that I recently pulled out of a boat, and I've noticed uh, a little valve clatter in one of the valves, so I decided to do a valve adjustment on it. And I figured since I had it in here and it was pretty easy to film that I would uh, make a little video showing people how to adjust the valves on one of these engines since I've seen it come up, uh, questions being asked sometimes. So, first of all, you want to get access to the valve train. First thing I do is remove the spark arrestor. And the next thing you're going to do now I did go through this and pre-loosen everything. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is take off your fuel line, take off your fuel pump sight line, and if you notice over here, on this particular engine there are three bolts. There is one here, and there is one right here and these two are holding on your coil and then there is one moving forward in the engine right there and these three bolts are 3 8 and they are a 12 point and I'm just I'm not gonna take them the whole way off I'm just going to loosen them so I can take this plate that the uh, shift interrupt switch and everything on and I just want to move it uh, forwards a little bit I just want to move this plate a little bit out of the way so I can lift this valve cover up on because you see there is a clearance issue right here with this bracket so that's what I'm going to do so the power of videotape this is uh, what I got done <clears throat> I removed the fuel line from the carburetor I removed the fuel pump sight line. I loosened the three bolts and now I'm able to move my bracket just enough out of the way. And I also went ahead and I cut a couple of zip ties just so I can move this uh, water intake line out of the way just for ease of filming here. I just want it up out of the way. and I went ahead and I took off all the uh, valve cover bolts there was five of them and now I'm going to lift off the valve cover and reveal my rocker arms now I just had a good close look at my rocker arms and just from visual inspection I've found out which one is going to be clacking and if you notice the amount of threads that are sticking off or sticking out the top of all these nuts that when I come down here to this one this bolt has worked its way loose so that right there is going to be my noisy lifter right there I've already checked and none of the you know I look down the line I don't know if you can see this but you want to make sure that they're all pretty well the same height down there and you don't want the studs to pull up out of the head or come unscrewed out of the head so that all looks good so it looks like this nut right here has come loose and that's going to be my noisy lifter this engine's been sitting for a couple of days and hasn't been running is I want to pump up the lifters and the way I'm going to do that is to turn over the engine uh, you can do this before you take this engine all apart run the boat for you know a couple of minutes get the oil pressure up and then wait for it to cool off a little bit and disassemble it to the way I have it right now or you can use uh, a remote starter this is actually what the manual calls out for for turning the engine over and you will need one of these to get your engine rotated as I notice that these 3.0 engines here it's kind of hard to get to the crank bolt to turn it so you're going to need the starter 
to turn over your engine. So like I said, because it's sitting for a couple of days, I'm going to turn over the engine. I'm going to make sure the ignition's off. One of the things I did do is I hooked my fuel line back up because when you're turning over the engine and that's disconnected, you're going to get fuel spraying all over the place. So I just went ahead, put the fuel line back in the carb so I don't have any oil or fuel squirting all over the place and make a mess. So I have my engine hooked up to this remote starter box here and I'm just going to turn the engine over a little bit. And while I was turning over, so that's all you need, just uh, 15 seconds of rotating it over just to get oil circulating through the system and pump up those lifters. Okay, so after turning the engine over, I think I went ahead and removed all of the spark plugs. It just makes finding top dead center a little easier, um, but you want to be sure that it's number one is coming up on the compression stroke. So what I like to do is I will put my finger over the plug hole and then I'll turn over, bump over the engine. And when you feel your finger start to get blown off of the hole, that's when you know it's coming up on your compression stroke. The next thing you want to do is down here on your pulley that's attached to your crankshaft now you'll actually see your timing plate up here and it has numbers on it Let's see if I can 8, 4, 0, negative 4 and you want to and that's after top dead center down there after the 0 and this is all before 12, 8, 4, 0 and there's a notch it's right there on your pulley and you want that notch to be at zero when your piston is coming up on your compression stroke so I don't have a helper with with me right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn the engine over again I'm going to confirm that it's coming up on my compression stroke and then I will put that notch at the zero mark Okay, now as you can see, I did confirm that I was coming up on compression stroke, put my finger over the plug hole, turned the engine over till I felt the air start to escape from underneath my thumb, and then slowly cranked it over until I got that notch on that pulley lined up with zero. Now you can start adjusting your valves. Now I work on airplanes, and I'm always taught to always have my manuals around so as you can see that I have my manual open on my computer because I don't remember all of this from heart. This is the first time I ever did a Mercruiser 3.0 engine so I'm going from what the manual says. The only thing that I, the manual doesn't say is which one of these rockers is an intake and which one is exhaust. So I had to go on the forum and do a little digging around to find it. Usually on a V8 or something like that, you can find or you can just see which one is which. But on this one, it was a little goofy. So I went on there and so I had to go do a little bit of digging around and this is what I come up with. It starts out with exhaust. The very first one is an exhaust rocker, an exhaust valve. So it goes exhaust, intake, intake exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, and the very last one is an exhaust. So reading the manual it says that with the engine sitting in this position that I am able to adjust number one exhaust and intake, number two the intake, number three the exhaust, and number four intake. So one and two intake exhaust number two intake 
number three exhaust and number four intake when I did my visual inspection of this thing you did know I did notice that that nut was pretty far run out so you can see that this rocker is pretty loose and that was where my chatter was coming from so I'm not looking back and forth to the computer a thousand times I just went ahead and made this little slip of paper just so I can show which valve goes to the or which cylinder is the corresponding valves it just makes it a little simpler so you might want to go ahead and do this so you're not constantly looking back and forth wondering which valve is which so I just went ahead and did this another thing I did because I did find that valve or that rocker was so loose is I pulled out my push rod just to make sure there was no damage to it to see if it was mushroomed at all and uh, everything looks everything looks real good so I'm just gonna go ahead and reuse this push rod alright so I'm gonna start on the number one exhaust valve and I like to loosen it up a little bit just so I can spin the push rod with my fingers you can see it spin there now I'm gonna take and tighten it a little bit so I can't spin it with my fingers right there it stops and then I'm gonna loosen it again I'm gonna put tension on it with my forefinger and my thumb and I'm gonna loosen it and as soon as it starts spinning with no drag on it with just very little drag me spinning it with my thumb and forefinger that's right where you wanna start and you can see there's no up and down movement and that's zero lash I can spin it with just a little bit of drag on it and now what I'm gonna do it says in the manuals I'm gonna tighten this three quarters of a turn. So I'm going to start here. One, two, three. Now I'm going to come over here to the intake side and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to tighten it up so I can't spin it. Right there. Now I'm going to loosen it just so it starts to spin. right there and you can see that there's no lash there's just very little drag on there very little drag no lash there, no clacking and I'm gonna tighten it three quarters one two three and that's it. Uh, moving on to the other ones, the book says that I can... So now the book says that I can do my number two intake. So I'm going to go right here. That's my number two cylinder and that's the intake cord in my little paper here. Okay, once again, I'm going to tighten this a little bit so it won't move. I'm going to loosen it, keeping tension on it with my thumb and forefinger until it just starts to spin with no drag right there there's no zero lash right there and I'm gonna tighten it three quarters of a turn one two three and you're gonna move down and do everything it says. So you're gonna do one and two intake and exhaust, number two intake, number three exhaust, and number four intake. When that's all done you're gonna rotate the engine 360 degrees again lining up that mark with the zero with the zero mark on the tab and you're gonna go down and you're gonna do the rest that the manual says exactly the way I showed you on these three. And that's about it. Uh, just go down through and finish it up and I hope this video is a big help to everybody because I keep seeing that many questions asked about how to do this and so I figured I would make one. So good luck and if you have any questions don't be afraid to post it online and you'll get your question answered. Alright, thank you. Bye.
there is one here and there is one right here and these two are holding on your coil and then there is one moving forward in the engine right there